Since there's a lot of buzz right now around the ballpoint splatling, I've been seeing a lot of backliners working on their inkjets. Let me just say, as a player who, when asked what I main in Splatoon 3, tell people the Splatoon 2 Tentatex splatter shot, I wholeheartedly support this. You are beginning to learn the coolest special in the games of Splatoon. This is good. That said, I'm seeing a lot of really common mistakes. Things that me and the Splatoon 2 Tentatex Splattershot mains like me worked out back in 2018 when Enperi Duelies were meta, and the game was, super coincidentally, for totally unrelated reasons, in the state that many competitive players remember most fondly. Here are my five tips, look, look, I'm doing a bulleted list, guys, I'm a real YouTuber now, for how to inkjet without looking like you main a backline weapon. Have a target, and make sure you're getting a splat in the first two shots. Inkjet's biggest weakness, as a special, is its inconsistency. It is completely within the realm of possibility for a skilled inkjet user to get a quad from a single inkjet. It is also completely within the realm of possibility that you die without ever firing a shot, because the enemy e-leader was watching the top of the screen for when you popped your special and knew you were coming. If you pop inkjet because you have it, and it's time for the team to use specials, it's probably not going to work, and you're pretty likely to just go down. Before you click in the right stick, you need to find a target, and you need to launch in such a way that you're going to hit that target on the very first shot. Ideally, it's a direct, but even if you get an indirect, that paints their feet and damages them, which sets you up to splat them on the second shot. That's one of the most important criteria by which I judge every inkjet. Did you splat someone because of your very first shot? Don't use the special from max range. Now one of the tricks to splatting someone in the first shot is that inkjet's shot velocity is absolute garbage. It literally doesn't matter how well you aim this special weapon if you're trying to use it from max range, because a lot of the time an opponent will be able to see the shot coming and dodge it before it reaches them. This weapon is not a charger, it is not a splatling, it's not even a jet squelcher, in terms of how long it takes to deal lethal damage from max range. It has the blob lobber problem, where the further away you get, the less consistently you're able to do damage, and the weaker its control is over space. If you're going to one-shot someone on your first shot consistently, it's going to be at a closer range than you're probably accustomed to playing a backline weapon and you'll need to be watching the opponent so you have a good read, not on where they are, which is useless information with a shot velocity this slow, but on where they're going to be when the shot travels far enough to hit them. For my people who have taken physics out there, you're not trying to determine your target's position, you're trying to find their velocity. Take the time to figure out that vector quantity, and only then get airborne and fire that first shot. Put your jump point someplace safe. You shouldn't have too much trouble taking a second to figure out where that shot's going to land, because you should be launching from a position that's out of sight, behind some kind of cover, and far back enough to be relatively safe. With inkjet being as inconsistent as it is, you want to do as much as you can to minimize the chances that someone finds your jump point and camps it with a bomb or something on landing. Lots of people will just launch into the air whenever they think they have a shot lined up, but then have to spend half their inkjet's duration worrying about babysitting their jump point to prevent that from happening. If it's shoved deep into a corner or right underneath the friendly side of a ledge, it's a lot less likely opponents will know where you came from. At higher levels, someone may call out where they saw you lift off from, but you're still protected in that getting to the enemy side of a piece of cover in time to camp the jump is a lot more difficult than just firing shots at someone who's out in the open. Gain elevation quickly after launching. An inkjet is a lot more vulnerable in the air than most special weapons, which may stay grounded or offer some kind of protection if you're pushing in with them. While a good charger player will always be very difficult for an inkjet to play around, you keep yourself considerably safer from a majority of weapons, especially in the current meta where short-range shooters are as common as they are, by elevating soon after lifting off. A safe spot for your landing to be may be on the ground behind something, but while you're in the air, being as high up as possible makes it likely that a lot of weapons don't have the range to aim up and hit you. 
Even weapons that can reach, in theory, will have to move closer to you before they're in range, which can at least buy you time to respond. Elevation also makes the special much more powerful, as it lets you see and shoot over the top of cover. Inkjet is a line-of-sight weapon, and if you're stuck below a ledge as an inkjet, you can't get your shots over that ledge, and you can't threaten an opponent on that ledge at all. Look for level geometry on the map that no one else but a Zipcaster player would look for. That random, unpaintable bit of set dressing? That could give you a better vantage point if you figure out a quick way to get on top of it. Using Inkjet from underneath a ledge meets all of the previous four criteria. If you start on the friendly side of a ledge, and you spot an opponent on top of that ledge, you now have a target right in front of you, as close as you're ever going to want to be to anyone in the game of Splatoon 3. That point-blank direct is considerably easier to hit, both because of how wide an angle you have to hit the target at close range, and because of how little time they have to react and dodge the shot. Great chance of hitting your first shot. You're not going to be using the special from max range, because you'll be pushing into enemy territory with it, clearing an area that your team doesn't control, and letting your teammates move into it. Your jump will be in a safe place, because when you go over the top of the ledge, people are going to want to run away from you, not towards you, so you'll scare them away from your jump, which they won't have been able to see, because it's right up against the hard side of the ledge for them to see. Finally, when you get up over the top of that ledge, you'll put your jets on it, and they'll launch you way higher than you would be able to launch from ground level. And you can often find an even higher tier of ledge to reach as soon as you get on top of that ledge and keep going. This isn't the only play you can make with an inkjet, but it's one of the most reliable ways to get consistent value with it, and you want to be in places where you can make those kinds of plays when you can find them. One challenge of using the Ballpoints inkjet over, say, the Tri-Sloshers inkjet is that a Tri-Slosher already wants to be pushed right up against an enemy ledge. They can hit up over the top, and they also won't be seen from there. Both good things for that kind of a weapon. As backline players, though, you're going to have spent your whole Splatoon career conditioning yourself to always look for open sightlines, to avoid cover so it doesn't block your shots and prevent you from using your range advantage. You don't want to default to taking those kinds of positions with your main weapon, but when you do have your special ready to go, you want to be able to see one of those positions, consider whether you can safely reach it, and go for it decisively when there's a good opportunity. From there, once the special's done, you'll want to make sure you have an escape route ready so that you can back away into a position your main weapon likes as soon as you're on the ground again. It's a difficult, technically intensive special, and an easy one to mess up and get shot out of. But if you just focus on where you pop the special from, and what your plan is for your first shot and the ascent afterward, eventually, with enough repetition, your aim will get there. The practice room is a phenomenal place to start getting the aim part of it down. When you're shooting dummies and your special comes online, don't ignore it, just pop it while you have it, and figure out how to lead your shots, especially against the moving targets. Then, as you start hitting sick directs in games, you'll realize that, you know what, Jem? You were right. This is the coolest special in the Splatoon series, and I'll say I told you so.